Vroom vroom for my birthday. Yee yee yee. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Gran Turismo, a film that I went and saw on my birthday. And despite the fact I haven't played a Gran Turismo game since the PlayStation 1, I was interested in seeing this because of the story that it's based on and the fact that Neil Blomkamp finally gets to direct a full-length video game-based movie. A stretch at that, but still a video game-based movie. The fact that he was coming in to do this movie I still surprises me because I swear I thought I read an article or something back after Elysium that he would refuse to work for Sony. I don't know if something happened with Elysium because I was trying to find it, but I swear I thought it was Sony that he would never come back and work with them again. I don't know, he worked for them on this one and yeah, the movie follows this kid who is one of the best sim racers in the world in terms of Gran Turismo and he's given this opportunity by Nissan to come into this camp and try and learn and become an actual race car driver. And for the most part, this is true. The movie does take a lot of liberties of which I have not been able to discern them all yet. I've just been told take kind of a lot of the bits of this movie on surface level. And for one thing, especially with how the movie ends in terms of showing the credits, they do show that he is in fact a racer. He did his own stunt work in this movie for the, the actor who's playing him. His dad did in fact actually play for a soccer team. The one person who I do think might not be real or might be a bit of a stretch of fiction is David Harbour, which is a little bit unfortunate because he's the heart of the fucking movie. While you are somewhat invested in the kid's journey and wanting to become something, Someone said this is like the Rocky for racing movies, and a little bit, yes, on that level. David Harbour is the reason why you want to watch it, because he is a has-been a person who had an opportunity, but it slipped through his fingers, and he's getting to get that second chance to this kid by helping him navigate those troubles, those issues, and reaching those goals that he wasn't able to do when he was in his prime. His involvement in the movie is definitely the center, the heart of this film, because every time he's on screen with the kid, there's just this really decent chemistry between the two of them, and the banter and the kind of yin and yang between the two is very commendable. The other part I should talk about is just the video game elements. Between the CG of the kid coming in and out of a car through virtual, the kind of the place settings, showing the lines. For someone who has played racing games, I got all the terminology. I don't know if people who haven't played video games would kind of be like, what's going on? But it wasn't over the top. It wasn't out of place. It felt like, considering what it is, it is based on a video game. It is about a video game. So I did think that those parts were added into the film well. And also the time of this film. It's two hours and 17 minutes long and admittedly going in I thought wow that's way too long I couldn't tell what could be cut if anything that might have been let more left on the cutting room floor especially with how the uh, the climax kind of comes about but every part of the movie is decently paced and I actually like the editing there is technically speaking quick editing but there's a difference between the taken bullshit of showing the same thing 13 times and the editing that's in this movie it's like Fast and the Furious of showing different elements, the cars, turbines, the gear shift, the wheels, the effects on the ground, the car in motion, the atmosphere around it. But it's done cohesively, in part as well with the VFX that we've seen Neil Blomkamp knows how to use VFX, especially when he doesn't even have any fucking money, he knows how to do it. Are there maybe a couple shots here and there that might be a little bit, eh, there's one in particular during a Le Mans race where a car just... It looked really bad in the trailer, and it looks better in the movie, admittedly. That's kind of like my only complaint about the VFX. There are moments of the film where you are genuinely shocked. There are incidents that happened that I still have to figure out if they actually did, but I don't, I don't think they would bullshit on certain things that do happen in this movie. I kind of actually had a bit of Top Gun vibes, like the first Top Gun movie. I had a little bit of that in the lighter half of the movie. Overall, Gran Turismo is definitely a movie that's made for people who are fans of car racing games, and the story of the kid becoming this racer and having David Arbor be his mentor give you the general audience that center that you would need for a IP, a kind of story like this. 
if there's any faults, I feel that there's too much that's left out of the movie. There's some acting in this movie that's a bit, and eh, there's some story elements, some story beats that are like straight up copy and paste bullshit from other kind of run the mill uh, underdog sort of sports stories. But I still like it. I actually left the theater with a grin on my face. I thought that the race scenes were really well done, for the most part respectful. Maybe the end climax is a bit like, okay, I think you, this was the only thing you could get in to have him be as like, oh, come on, one last round sort of idea. If anything, it's definitely not for everyone. Like, I think if my dad watched it, he'd probably be like, and he's the one who introduced me to Gran Turismo. But overall, I thought that the movie was commendable. I think it did a decent job. I'm happy to see Neil Blomkamp make a movie again. And from what I've heard, this movie's not doing too bad either. So hopefully he can make movies again, because it's been a while. If any of you saw Oats, and you know that none of those movies got the financing to become actual movies, a fucking crime because some of those are the best dark dystopia sci-fi stories I've seen in a little while. My rating for Gran Turismo is a 4 out of 7. I would suggest it. I would recommend it. I had a good time. I left the theater and I had no regrets. Anyways guys, those are my thoughts about the movie. What did you think about it? Let me know in the comments below. And then uh, just a little bit of an update about myself. Apologies for taking so long to get things done. Uh, there was this thing where Mark and I were going to review all of the Saw movies. And it was all anticipation for Saw X coming out in September. However, when we saw the trailer for Saw X and it's like Saw 1.2, and the timeline is like, okay, if they are not going to put any fucking effort into this sequel, why should we? So it just killed my drive to want to do any videos. I was halfway through editing our review of Saw 3 when I saw the trailer. I'm like, fuck this. Anyways, guys, the camera just died, but hopefully you liked the video. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Until then, I'll see you guys next time.